Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered how some vehicles seem to save fuel on long trips? Well, the answer may lie in a technology called cylinder deactivation. In today's video, we'll take an in-depth look at what cylinder deactivation is, how it works, its benefits, drawbacks, and which cars feature this technology. If you're interested in learning more about how car engines work and how manufacturers are improving fuel efficiency, you're in the right place. Let's start with the basics. Cylinder deactivation is a system that allows an engine to temporarily deactivate some of its cylinders when full power isn't necessary. This is especially useful when you're cruising at a steady speed on the highway, where the engine doesn't need all its cylinders to maintain that speed. For example, in a V8 engine, four cylinders can be turned off while you're driving at a constant speed. When you need more power, such as for acceleration or going uphill, all eight cylinders are activated again. This process happens automatically and smoothly without affecting the driving experience. So how does this work in practice? When cylinder deactivation is activated, the engine's computer system closes the intake and exhaust valves of the deactivated cylinders. This stops any fuel from entering those cylinders and prevents any exhaust from exiting. The spark plugs are also deactivated, so no ignition occurs in those cylinders. Thanks to advanced engine management systems, all of this happens instantly. The system detects the driving conditions and determines when to deactivate or reactivate the cylinders, making it a seamless process that you won't even notice. Let's talk about the benefits of cylinder deactivation. First and foremost, fuel efficiency. By deactivating cylinders when full power is not required, your engine uses less fuel. This is particularly beneficial during highway driving where you maintain a consistent speed and don't need all the engine's power. Over time, this results in better fuel economy which can lead to cost savings. Another significant advantage is lower emissions. When fewer cylinders are in use, less fuel is being burned and as a result, fewer emissions are produced. This helps meet environmental standards and reduces your carbon footprint. Additionally, because the engine isn't working as hard, there's potentially less wear and tear on components like valves and pistons. Over time, this can contribute to the longevity of the engine. Cylinder deactivation does have its drawbacks. One downside is the added complexity of the engine. The system requires more parts, such as specialized valve lifters and sensors, which increases the overall complexity and potential repair costs. Another challenge is uneven wear. Because some cylinders are activated and deactivated frequently, there may be increased stress on certain engine components, such as valve lifters or seals. While many manufacturers have designed systems to minimize this issue, it's something to keep in mind. Additionally, cylinder deactivation is only effective under specific conditions. It doesn't work during rapid acceleration, stop and go driving or heavy loads like towing. So the savings are most noticeable during steady highway cruising. Which cars have this technology? Several well-known automakers have integrated cylinder deactivation into their vehicles. For example, General Motors uses a system called active fuel management in many of their V6 and V8 engines, including models like the Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra. Chrysler uses a system called multi-displacement system in their Hemi V8 engines. This allows models like the Dodge Ram and Chrysler 300 to deactivate four of the eight cylinders under light load conditions. Honda also employs cylinder deactivation in some of their V6 engines using a system called variable cylinder management found in models like the Honda Odyssey and Honda Pilot. Even BMW uses a version of cylinder deactivation in some of their V6 engines to optimize fuel efficiency on long drives. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more in-depth discussions about car technology. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.